Welcome to this discussion of the settlement of disputes between states through arbitration. In this video, we will focus on the past, the present, and the future of interstate arbitration. When did it emerge? Does it play an important role in today's world? And why do states resort to it? What are the prospects for this method of dispute settlement? These are the main issues that we will be addressing together in this video. Arbitration between states or state-like entities has a long history. Even at the time of ancient Greece, arbitration was used to solve disputes between allied states and city-states relating to their independence and sovereignty. In the Middle Ages, arbitration was also largely used, the Pope acting, for instance, as sole arbitrator. With the 1648 Peace Treaty of Westphalia, which followed the Thirty Years' War in Europe, and the primacy of state sovereignty that came along, arbitration declined in interstate relations. During the 18th and 19th century, arbitration re-emerged in a modern form. The United States and the United Kingdom played an important role in that regard. This paved the way for the 1899A Convention, which created the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Since the end of the Cold War, interstate arbitration has been increasingly popular among states, as is illustrated by the growing number of cases settled under the auspices of the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Moreover, this is evidenced by the large interstate arbitration practice in various subject matters, for instance, environmental disputes or territorial disputes, as exemplified by the recent ABA arbitration that took place under the auspices of the Permanent Court of Arbitration regarding the dispute between the government of Sudan and the Sudan People's Liberation Movement. On July 22nd, the Court of Arbitration in The Hague redefined the borders of Abyei province in the north of South Sudan. The decision comes in the wake of violent confrontations in this oil-rich region. In May 2008, the conflict caused unrest throughout the region. 40,000 people fled the city of Abyei, which was almost destroyed. Though the court's ruling favors North Sudan, shortly after it was announced, both parties declared that they would not contest the decision. Why, in your view, does interstate arbitration play such a crucial role in the settlement of interstate disputes today? This comes in fact from the control that it leaves to states over the settlement of their disputes. Of course, arbitration is a proper adjudicative method of dispute settlement. It is characterized especially by the binding nature of the decision taken by a sole arbitrator or on an even body of arbitrators. However, states retain a large control over how the arbitration is conducted. First of all, as discussed in Module 2 with respect to the International Court of Justice, state consent is required in interstate arbitration. In other words, contrary to the functioning of the judiciary in your domestic legal systems, no interstate disputes can be settled by arbitration without the agreement of the parties to the dispute. Arbitration tribunals have no automatic jurisdiction over interstate disputes. This consent is usually given after a specific dispute has arisen between states or in a treaty with respect to future disputes that will arise from it. Secondly, and contrary to the settlement of interstate disputes by the International Court of Justice, states can decide who will act as arbitrator. They can determine the law to be applied to the dispute and the procedural arrangements. As to these arrangements, they can especially decide the level of confidentiality, including whether the hearings will be open to the public and whether the decision will be released. Also, the settlement is left to arbitrators. These features of interstate arbitration make it for state an acceptable political solution to settle the disputes. So, what do you think is the future of interstate arbitration? It seems to have a promising future. It is true that states have entered into a cooperative era since the end of the Second World War and have proven to be ready to have their relations regulated by law and their disputes settled by adjudicative bodies in certain situations. However, the sovereignty will very likely continue to rule the international society. In the context of this decentralized society, 
that the international society will likely remain for a long period of time, the flexibility that is characteristic of interstate arbitration seems to make it one of the worst forms of settlement, except for all those other forms that have been tried, to paraphrase Winston Churchill. In this video, you have learned about the past, the present, and the future of interstate arbitration. You have discovered how states retain control over the settlement of their disputes in arbitration. In video 3, we will focus on investor state arbitration, which is gaining an increasing importance in international litigation. I look forward to continuing with you this inquiry into the world of the arbitration of international disputes.